Hello everyone, Gigabeef here, and today we're going to be discussing things that you should be thinking about to get ready before the next wipe. So stick around and let's get going. With wipe hype reaching an all-time fever pitch level across the community, the most important question that we have to ask ourselves is how can you prepare the best for what is to come when it eventually does? Just quickly for the brand new players, a wipe in EFT is basically a reset of the game that is done by Battlestate, the game's developers, when large or important game functionality changes after approximately a few months to six months or longer from the start of the previous one. Older wipes typically came faster than they do today, where a wipe is generally lasting for a long time, but practically it means everyone loses everything in their stash, hideouts reset to zero, and all quest and trader progression is lost. It's nearly as if you started a fresh account, with some small differences such as identified items staying identified, which is a relatively new change, and weapon presets being retained within the modding screen. If you want to know when the wipe is, Thursday is the answer. Also goes the community meme anyway. But in seriousness, no one really knows, and it sounds like this time BSG are likely to surprise us on a short timescale. Usually once announced, up to a week in advance, there are pre-wipe events such as scavs being replaced by raiders, every item reduced to next to nothing in price, and other such shenanigans, but again it's not clear if this will happen this time around, or something different entirely. But before all this happens, what can we do to maximise our player experience in the next wipe, be more efficient, and get an advantage by playing now? Well, basically, in this time that we have at the late stage of the wipe, at the end of a wipe cycle, this is first and foremost the perfect opportunity to get better at things that you're not good at. If you're on your first wipe, go and visit some places you haven't been, or even whole maps that you haven't learnt yet or are not comfortable with. Go to labs, try to kill a boss, just something that you haven't done before because you were too worried about losing gear or whatever else. Because remember, fairly soon, all the stuff that you've been saving up in your stash will be deleted, and although you might just die with it in 5 seconds, that's still preferable to never using it all. Once the wipe comes, all of this stuff will be gone, so now is the time to try out new guns, some meta, some non-meta, and broaden your horizons in terms of your knowledge and skills, which will improve your game for next wipe when it matters more. If you're that way inclined, some people like to save gunsmith builds from the mechanic quest lines now while they have all the parts available. Not something that I've ever done, but I know that some people like to do that. So other than gaining as much practical experience as possible now, the next thing that we should consider is what we're going to do when the wipe comes. You don't need to have a detailed plan, but it's useful to keep in mind some of the broad goals or strategies to go for once we're reset and your PMC is level 1 raring to go, and when the wipe hits it's going to be fast and furious with players trying to progress as quickly as possible. The first decision you'll have to make is on your PMC faction, and remember that your choice of team will drive your starting loadout. This can change and usually does each wipe, but for a rough idea of what the starting gear will look like, check out what it was for this wipe and that can give you a guide as to what to expect. I'll put a link in the description to the reddit thread with this wipe starting gear, and it is mostly the same between Bear and Usec, but as you imagine, the Bear starts with some Russian guns such as the PB-19 and the AK-74M, whereas Usec starts with some MP5s and the M4. The part of the thread that is the most important is the sections that say depend on chosen faction, and it lists the starting gear for each tier of the game, so from standard to EOD. I don't know about you, but I know which loadout I prefer, and I had a blast with the MP5 at the start of last wipe, but just choose whichever you want, in the long run it doesn't make too much difference, and won't for the next wipe either as far as we know. The next thing you're going to want to do is get to level 10. This will unlock the flea market, and regardless of whether you think it's good for gameplay or not, right now in its current implementation, it's one of the most powerful tools for progression that any player has in their arsenal. Use the knowledge that you have to try to save up the items that are valuable, and sell as little to the traders as possible as you get there, and retain them to sell on the flea instead. Usually this means just scraping by until you get there, and then actually having money again once you can sell all of these things once you hit level 10. I do appreciate that this is easier said than done for standard account players with limited stash sizes, but just do your best and whatever you can save up will help. Next up, there are many finding raid items for quests, flash drives, items for the Punisher series such as the infamous PM pistol and lower half masks, cans of Tushonka for Jaeger, croutons again for Jaeger, plugs for therapist, the list goes on. Until you've been through the game a few times, it's hard to remember all of these, so don't worry about it too too much, but if you're under no time pressure in deciding what to keep and what to get rid of, there's a handy wiki page that's a bit hidden away, and not only lists all the items that are required as finding raid for every quest, but also lists whether it can be crafted at some point or received as a quest reward. As a reminder, both crafted items and quest rewards from traders get the finding raid tag, which means that they're eligible for quest completion. I'll pop this one down in the description too. This is a page I've actually never used myself, but found it when I was looking for resources for this video. Thinking more broadly about the Tarkov economy and how this usually goes, you can think of all of the items in the game as on a chart of when they're needed most by the player base. Where we are now at the end of the wipe, prices are pretty stable on most items at this point as a large percentage of the player base that is focused on quick progression has already completed everything and upgraded their hideouts to max. When the next wipe gets started, all of these people will start again, but because everyone will be doing the same tasks and building the same modules all at the same time, this causes massive pressure on certain items which is most easily seen in the prices on the flea market. 
However, this pressure doesn't pass through all items equally, as those that are required at the start will obviously get the most attention first, such as the things that are needed for level 2 hideout upgrades and potentially even level 1 now as you need a few items just to get started on the modules, and you might get unlucky or just might not want to do the loot runs for that particular item. The hideout requirement items will be expensive, because these modules can be built with non finding raid items, so post level 10 you can buy them from the flea in theory. Especially pricey will be those where you need multiple of the same item to build a module. The shooting range for example requires 5 packs of nails, level 2 illumination needs 14 light bulbs, and the one in particular that was crazy last wipe and I think is going to be even worse this time is the corrugated hoses for the water collector. You need 4 for level 1 and 6 for level 2, and they aren't that common, but you can then make them once you reach level 2. This will almost certainly drive incredible demand for the hoses, and last wipe they were going for up to 200,000 at one stage, so if you can get that module up quickly, you can make a lot of money in a very short space of time, but again this will be transient, so as quick as they ramp up, they will fall again as players progress past this point. As a side note, this is the reason by the way that it's important to keep as many items as you can to sell on the flea. You could be giving up lots of potential rubles, that is if you aren't going to end up using it yourself for progression, which saves you buying an item on the flea, and as I always say, losing less is gaining more, so it's still valuable. Also, given we know that crafts get the finding raid status, components for crafting quest items will also be expensive around the time that players start getting that quest. A good example of this is the tank battery which can be split down into car batteries which are required for therapist and leads to those batteries running at well over a million rubles at the middling stages of the early wipe. Likewise, now that you need a finding raid ledex for therapist but can make one in the hideout, the components for this will be expensive so if you were thinking of crafting it rather than farming shoreline or elsewhere for it, sourcing the pieces to make it early on would be a good idea. The same logic goes for the series of quests from Peacekeeper that need the Intelligent Centercrafts too. It could be useful to buy some of these ingredients early before any of the player base has these quests, as the demand will be much lower. Probably the module that has been in focus the most through this wipe is the Bitcoin farm. What started as a nice way to make some passive income to reward players that have finished the hideout, tracking the real world rampaging crypto prices caused untold damage to the Tarkov economy this time by injecting massive amounts of free money into the system. BSG responded by increasing the Bitcoin production time, increasing time to craft GPUs in the hideout, the whole fuel crisis which at its peak had metal fuel on its way to a million rubles each, and dramatic increases in associated module costs primarily focused around solar power. Finally nerfing the trader Bitcoin repurchase price has put it somewhat back in its box, although the question remains as to what will happen if prices fall again. We are going to have to wait to see how this plays out, but I still think it will be worth investing in the Bitcoin farm early. The prices of GPUs do track the general price of Bitcoin, so you can expect graphics cards to stabilise at a lower level in the next wipe than what we saw at the peak of the frenzy this time. However, many players will want to get the hideout max regardless just as a point of progression, and secondly, the first GPU is the most valuable because of how the system is implemented. Before anyone has the farm created, GPUs have no actual value for players, and people will be selling them on the fleet early to fund their kits. They will be cheap, possibly very cheap, as some people may not think the farm is worth it anymore post the changes. I will be looking to do the same as last wipe, where I used all my spare money to buy cards early, and had 19 before the Bitcoin farm level 1 was even built in my hideout. Yes, we do have to think about fuel costs, but if you're running the other modules anyway that require fuel, it's blended across the whole hideout and not just on the Bitcoin farm, so I still think it's probably worthwhile. One other crafting idea to remember is that power cables into wires pretty much makes money at all stages through the wipe, and at level 1 workbench will probably be the best that you could do consistently, especially when players are buying wires for hideout upgrades. Practically for the raids themselves, the first week of the white will be dominated by level 3 and potentially lower durability level 4 armour, which makes 76239 weapons extremely strong with PS rounds. There are a ton of different weapons you can use, but these are generally my preference in the early wipe stage after a few days, because they can kill almost anyone and PS is super cheap. These guns used to be harder to make work right at the beginning due to the availability of the larger magazines, but now you can either use the SKS from Prapple 1 with the 20 round mags from Peacekeeper 1, or the Vepa VPO-136 Semi-Auto 762 rifle from Skier 1 and 30 round mags from Prapple 1. The SKS is cheaper, but you'll be using the irons as the version with the dovetail is only available from Jaeger which won't be unlocked straight away, whereas the VPO-136 which is basically the Semi-Auto AKM can be modded at level 1 with a bastion cover from Skier which will allow you to mount optics or red dots if you find one early, or if you buy the EKP or Burris from Prapple 1 or Peacekeeper 1 respectively. Alternatively, to get full auto early, you can get an AKM from Prapple 1 using 3 cans of Tushonka, or you can make one in the workbench 1 using the Vepa that we were just discussing and a few other items. In my opinion, these guns will be very useful after the initial first few days, because day 1 or 2 has plenty of people with level 2 or 0 armour and no useful helmets, so rocking 9 more weapons such as the MP5 or PP19 with PST ammo is perfectly fine for killing them given they have lower recoil than the starter assault rifles with 0 modding, i.e. you'll have an advantage with 9mm versus players using 545 rifles and stock M4s using M855 556 ammo. 
But once people start using level 3 and 4 routinely, you might want to up the calibre a little bit given AP 6.3 and 7 and 31 will be out of reach at this stage in the wipe. If you learned something or enjoyed today's video and want to support the channel, please as always consider sending a like and a comment as it helps with visibility for those who haven't found me yet on YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter and Twitch to check out when I'm live, which is currently two times a week, once on Friday at 9pm UK time for the real-time recording of the Scav Talk podcast, which you can check out the link to in the description below, and a regular Tarkov stream on Saturday at 2pm UK time in the afternoon. And with all that said, I'll see you next time, and as always, have fun in your raids.